Hello, and welcome aboard to this episode of the We Are Reading One Piece podcast. This is a podcast dedicated to following the entire story of One Piece from beginning to end as we focus on one volume each episode. We keep the discussion spoiler-free for new fans of the series, so this is the perfect place to follow along, whether you're new to the series or just want to revisit the world of One Piece with us. This week, we'll be covering Volume 6, The Oath, which covers chapters 45 through 53. My name is Joel, and I'll be joined today by Sean. Hi, this is Sean, Samuel76 on Twitter, for whatever that's worth these days. <laughs> uh, we're getting into a great, some great stuff here. <laughs> All right, and we also have Evan. Evan here. I'm excited <laughs> for this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we got a good volume. Uh, I am excited to get into this one as well. Uh, this one will give us more of a, a bigger insight into the actual world of One Piece. So uh, we see that we're kind of like uh, little frogs in the pond here. All right. So uh, just to um, give a brief overview of where we left off last time. Uh, so last time uh, Luffy defeated Kuro. He gained a new ship and Usopp joined the crew. Luffy accidentally blew a hole in the roof of a sea restaurant called the Bratier uh, when they were heading there in hopes of finding a cook to join their crew. In order to pay back for the damage that he caused, uh, Luffy needs to work there for a year. He notices one of the cooks seeking food to a starving pirate who couldn't pay and determines that he's found his cook. So let's kick it off with chapter 45, Before the Storm. Wait, before we dive in, I was a little disappointed to see in the character uh, like descriptions in the beginning. They kind of spoiled both of the villain uh, reveals. Well, you shouldn't have read that. <laughs> How would you not read that, though? I, I, like, oh, like I always skip those. Page. Yeah, I mean, I get it. <laughs> I don't even realize that they're there, to be honest. <laughs> I was a little disappointed. I usually do read the little, like, that opening page. Even though I am caught up, it's not like I, you know, haven't read in years, and I'm just, like, picking up a random volume. Yeah. But I still like to read the beginning, and I was a little disappointed to see them in there, because I feel like they probably could have waited till the next book to include them. Yeah, that's fair. At least on that, at least in that setting, you you make a valid you make a valid point, and it's totally up to you. But I would recommend in the future, if you see some new faces that you don't immediately recognize, skip it and, and read right, it after yeah. the that's, next. But yeah, like <laughs> hey, I forgot this guy. Wait, no, I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the um the beginning of the anime where they show like all the characters that you don't know. Mm. Oh yeah, like the, the, it's like the opening. Yeah, yeah. Opening. Who's this guy riding on the wind and looking over his shoulder while his cape blows? Oh, I, I guess we'll find <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, so I would suggest uh, maybe if you want to go back um, after you read the volume, you can go in there. Or, or yeah, Sean, so if you see a face you don't recognize, like just move on. Uh, but we will be introduced to those characters at some point in this volume. Yeah. All right, so chapter 45, Before the Storm. Luffy saw Sanji feed the food to Gein and asked Sanji to join his crew. Sanji didn't realize their new chore boy was a pirate and asks why they fired on the restaurant. Luffy explains it was an accident when fighting off the Navy. Sanji goes on to explain that Luffy should be careful because Zeph is a former pirate himself. The restaurant has gained a reputation for their cooks fighting with pirates, but this caused the waiters to become scared and quit. Luffy again asks Sanji to join his crew, but Sanji refuses because he has a reason he needs to stay. Luffy won't take no for an answer and refuses his refusal. Gein interrupts and asks Luffy what his aim is. Luffy tells him he's going to the Grand Line to become the King of the Pirates. Gein tells him not to go as he would just be rushing to his death. Over in the kitchen, some of the cooks are telling Patty that he shouldn't have angered one of Don Krieg's men. Kree commands an armada of 50 pirate crews. Patty stands by his decision as Zeph tells him to get back to work. Luffy tells Gein that he's going to the Grand Line anyway. Gein thanks Sanji for the food as he ships off. Zeph notices the empty plate that Sanji had fed to Gein, but he doesn't say anything about it as he calls Sanji and Luffy to get back to work. Luffy seems to be struggling to fill, fulfill his duty as Tur Boy as he is breaking all the dishes he washes and swipes from the food that was supposed to go out to the customers. To keep him out of the kitchen, Patty tells Luffy to take some orders. In the dining area, Luffy notices his crew seated at a table while he's working away. Luffy is not happy at his crew as they taunt him. 
Sanji is smitten by Nami, but Zeph tells Sanji he should, he should just leave to go be a pirate. Gein has made his way back to Krieg, but their ship is in rough shape. Gein tells his captain about how one of the cooks fed him, so he agreed to guide him back there as well. All right, so uh, Sean, you want to kick this one off? This one is great. Uh, I just, it's just some got some absolute slamming Luffy moments at the at the start um, that I just am a big fan of. Uh, I decline your declination. Like, is that even a is that, declination? Is that a word? Is declination uh, a word? I should know as an English major. So good. I don't. I really don't. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was I'll Luffy's that uh, concern. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, it's just <laughs> it's really good. Moment. And it 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 it, it kind of does make you be like, come on, Luffy. Like you just like, no, I've made my decision. It makes you feel a little like a jerk here. <laughs> Classic Luffy, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Take, totally for an for answer. But we get our first real. Uh, I love Gein. He's one of my favorite of these characters, side characters in this. He's got a cool look. He's got a cool personality. Um, you don't, you could you you you're not quite sure where his mind space is sometimes. Um. And where he his warning of like just don't don't go to the grand line just stay mm. here like you will you will die like I barely saw it and I'm terrified yeah uh, is really it, it's like oh that is ominous as hell he gives a great description of the grand line saying like he doesn't know if it was a dream or like what part of it was real and like they really start painting a great picture of the grand line in this volume on a on a whole yeah. I, I particularly love this page in this chapter. Um, enter Luffy, free labor chore boy. <laughs> and they, give him, like, <laughs> they give him a new character title. Yeah, a new character that. title and intro. So funny. and he is just just atrociously bad at everything so he bad. does. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, he's doing that. more harm than good. So just like just go somewhere else. You can take orders, right? You can at least do that. And he goes over <laughs> into the actual restaurant and then doesn't even take any orders. Like he doesn't no. do anything productive. He actually <laughs> eats this food that's supposed to go out. He does. He does make. Uh, he does serve uh, a drink to uh, Zoro, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> which is then immediately returned to sender. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah, Sean, do you want to walk us through that one? Yeah, like Zoro's just kind of living it up and like, oh, I guess we'll just have a nice meal here. Why not? Serve us, serve us, chore boy. And then Luffy's like, okay, I'm going to stick some <laughs> so a booger in your drink here. <laughs> and it looks like Zoro's about to go for it. And and also, I love Usopp just cra trying to crack, cracking up in the back and, Luffy, <laughs> and Nami trying to like laugh. And then he just slams you drink it. <laughs> so I love I, I you, you don't expect Zoro to be that quick sometimes with his yeah. last loss of direction. Yeah. But I guess he was aware from the start what was going on. Yeah, I think that's that's so great because he like he plays along with it. We kind of seen like that kind of mischievous kind of jokey side with him before, like mm -hmm. with the Usopp pirates, how he talked about how they ate Usopp. So he, he kind of has that like uh, <laughs> yeah. that in him. He's not as he's not as stoic as you think, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's a great moment. And, and then right uh, after that moment, Sanji confesses his love for Yeah, Nami. which he will do for <laughs> many times again and again. Uh, uh, anytime he sees a woman, yep, yeah, that, that's Sanji. Classic. And she just yeah. reacts with utter confusion, just like, huh? <laughs> he has yeah, to play it up a little bit. Well, I mean, this this first panel here, she just kind of looks at him. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Nami is totally, totally like just going along with it. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then like she, she just knows that she's kind of like working Sanji, and like she's, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. And she knows that like uh, Sanji's just gonna play right into her hand. Uh, but yeah, it's like one of those tropes I'm not a big fan of. Uh, you know, like the typical like womanizer trope. It's like an, I feel like it's a really common trope in I, anime. I will say it gets more annoying and much much later on than it is here, but that'll be months from now. <laughs> uh, there's yeah, it's uh, uh the we ending though. Love at first sight. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, love at yeah. first sight. I'm sure. I'm sure. And second, and no, third it is place. pretty over the top. Um, <laughs> I like the little. I like Zeph uh, reestablishing himself a bit more here. He's, he clearly commands the kitchen as well as apparently formerly a pirate crew. Mm. Um, Patty and Carne. I love the I love the image of Carne 
uh, in the in the when he's holding the knife up to his side and he's got the reflection of his face there as he's talking about how Krieg's Krieg's pirates are gonna just kill us all if they like if like if he if 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 he comes back and tells Krieg he was mistreated like we're all screwed like yeah so that's a really cool image. That is really um, cool. you know, and then sure enough, that is precisely kind of what uh, Gein tells somebody at the end. Well, he says Don Krieg. So <laughs> it's not looking good. Yeah. Krieg incoming. On that same page, there's a cool flashback. Oh, like the so last thing. a lot of panels yeah. like this, kind of like a storytelling panel that kind of gives just like, like a memory or an image um, over a character. And I think that's just like a really cool um, way of storytelling. Like it just, it's just very visually uh, pleasing. And I, mm -hmm. I feel like they've been doing that like more recently in more recent volumes. Yeah, and I, I like how Oda plays up that mystery angle. Yeah. Kind of like build that. that so like silhouetted figures and yeah, it's cool. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, like fun moments in this in this chapter kind of like some hijinks going on mm -hmm. it's kind of like the, the calm before the storm as you know the title would suggest <laughs> uh but yeah i also like how zeph is basically kicking sanji out but sanji's like refusing to go he, he's just staying firm he, like, he's saying for some reason but zeph is telling him you're free to go like i don't want you here you yeah. suck <laughs> so, like luffy's like oh good now you can come with me but sanji's like no i'm not going anywhere <laughs> Yeah, he said it very, like, kind of casually, I feel like. Hmm. Very casual, like, matter of fact. Yeah, I feel like this is probably a conversation that they have, like, yeah, every day. So yeah, this is probably not the, the first time they have this conversation. Uh, and then uh, I also wanted to point out in the SBS. Mm. <laughs> um, did, uh, did you see the the whole Jango thing with the... Yes, the go oh, yeah. explained. Because <laughs> we had this discussion, which is hilarious, because I was like... Oh, this is definitely a reference to Egyptian uh, pharaoh, um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he blatantly states that it's a mushroom. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, sure. Hilarious. Yeah, I wasn't sure at what point he explained that it was a mushroom. So I, I didn't want to say too much. Uh, but yeah, it's just like... He he does explain here that because he didn't bathe enough, he grew a mushroom <laughs> on his chin, just his chin, I guess. Jeez. But he also mentions that he used to be a dancer, so I think another reference to him being like a Michael Jackson type yeah. character. Yeah. He even says like, "Oh, I can moonwalk." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then he he ate the cap of the mushroom, even though it's disgusting, and that's what gives him his hypnotism powers. Why not? Why not? <laughs> So it's not actually a devil fruit, but it still gave him it powers is, in some way. So. A devil devil fungus. Power. A devil fungus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a, an odd little uh, explanation for what's going on there. So that those are the types of things where it's like, oh, it's not really being too serious, but he gives like an explanation for things. That was pretty funny. The grand and, scheme of things. And a small little diagram as well. It, it works, but yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yes, yes, it's pretty hilarious. I mean, we've seen a good amount of it now, and it's <laughs> it's pretty wild, some of the questions that come in. Oh, trust me, they get worse. They get like, worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, uh, any closing thoughts before we move on to the next chapter? I think we're ready to bring on the Krieg. Onward. Okay. So before we get there, let's uh, go into the next part of the cover story. Oh, yes. So we have Buggy's crew after the battle, part eight, decisive duel in the forest. Gaimon shoots at Buggy while he tries to run away, making several holes, making several holes in his cloak. So that's it. I'm on revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Buggy's made his way to uh, the forest. Uh, he encountered Gaimon, who's defending the animals and trying to scare away Buggy. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Chapter 46, An Uninvited Guest. Sanji says he's the assistant chef and is confused why Zeph would tell him to leave. 
Zeph says that he fights with the customers and the other employees, flirts with, flirts with the women and the bad cook, so he should get out of his restaurant. Sanji pushes back that he can insult him about everything except his cooking, and he's not going anywhere. Zeph throws Sanji through a table to put him in his place, but Sanji says he'll stay until the day Zeph dies. Luffy takes this to mean that Sanji has permission to join his crew. Sanji apologizes to Nami and serves her some wine on the house. When Usopp asks about service for the rest of them, Sanji tells him to be happy with what they have. Sanji says Usopp still has mushrooms on his plate and he needs to finish them, but Usopp doesn't like mushrooms. Sanji insists, but tells uh, Nami, uh, but Nami tells him to stop fighting over her and Sanji is immediately distracted. Nami says the food is a bit expensive, so Sanji says her food is on the house, so <laughs> the rest of the crew needs to pay up. Two days later, the cooks notice Don Creek's ship has arrived. They blame Patty for bringing his wrath on them. Sanji notices the ship is a wreck, as if it was destroyed by a typhoon. Creek makes his way through the door and begs for food as he collapses. Gein arrives at his side and asks them to help the captain. Patty laughs him off and says that he'll alert the Navy. The people of the restaurant determine it's better if they let him die. Otherwise, he could just turn around and kill them all when he gets his strength back. He continues to grovel on his hands and knees, promising not to harm anyone if they feed him. Sanji knocks Patty out of the way and bring, uh, brings Krieg a plate. One of the other cooks named Carne warns that Krieg made a name for himself through lies and deceit, earning the nickname Foul Play Krieg. Right on cue, Krieg attacks Sanji and says he'll be taking the ship now that he has his strength back. Okay, so we, we did jump a, a little ahead um in, in the last discussion but yeah uh with the conversation with uh Zeph and Sanji uh you know that that's like, like I was saying I think that's something that they have on a regular basis that's probably a conversation that um you know they have all the time uh and they're they're both firmly adamant about you know uh Sanji wanting to to stay and then Zeph wanting Sanji to leave uh but we don't really know exactly what their deal is and why why Sanji's staying One meal, all it takes. Barely even swallowed in. It's like back. To yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of a trend. This volume, like people yeah. immediately. That's how good the food is, I guess. Like, right? Yeah. Like, it's that shown in logic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Or the Castlevania finding a wall turkey and just like <laughs> health goes back up. Like, <laughs> double dragon, the idea. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Sanji and Zeph have some really creative burns. Yeah. Of creative culinary counters. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Zeph calls everyone an eggplant. Yeah. An underdone eggplant. As, as someone who does not like eggplant one bit, I am sympathetic to Zev using it as an insult. <laughs> so. uh, I like... It shows Gein is like... It's when Krieg goes back on his word he's immediately like no you you promised me you weren't going to do this and you're still doing it and it shows that he was he was sincere unless this is mm. also just a lie but i don't yeah. think you know, his face looks sincere yeah um, it was just a shock to everybody else and it's it, it shows that yeah uh, it, it makes me like the character more for being like well shit mm. i'm sorry guys i messed up i guess <laughs> turns out my captain is a piece of shit but, but it sounds like his captain's pretty notorious for being. Yeah, asleep. you'd think you'd think that that Gein would have been like, hmm, how much yeah. can I believe you? But, <laughs> well, he tried. Yeah, Gein's just trying to see like the the best in his captain, even though it's probably very misplaced. Mm. He also might think that Krieg is like desperate enough to, you know, keep his word this one time. Because he's basically at death's door. So after the events, maybe he thinks he's been, he's been humbled after the Grand Line. Uh, but that's not really the case here. No. Unfortunately not. Still a schmuck. <laughs> this was a great uh, panel with Sanji and Usopp getting in each other's faces. <laughs> Usopp, Usopp's nose is literally bent bending, up. Bending, bending like that. a friggin' <laughs> like bar, pry bar. I love it, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I have to admit, I love Krieg. Even in the destroyed state, Krieg ship is pretty cool looking. Oh, that's such I mean, a yeah. great page. It reminds me very it much is. of like cool the, uh, the Black Pearl coming through in the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Like, oh man, this ship is beaten the hell up, but it still yes. looks intimidating. Yeah, it looks more like a ghost ship that way. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like, I love how uh, Sanji says that like it doesn't look like the work of like men. This this had to have been like a typhoon. Yeah. So like, but I like, a storm it. came and ravaged this thing. Yeah, I wonder what kind of storm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Uh, it's it's mostly set up for what for the final the final bit here, but it's it's still a good one. We get more of uh, uh, Sanji flirting with with Nami and her continuing to just string him along for all he's worth, <laughs> enjoying her free drink of or, or, <laughs> grand grand marinade as a digestive or a fruit Macedonia. I don't. These are probably <laughs> real terms. I don't know what they are, but like, <laughs> marinade is is real. I know that. Yeah. Never heard of the other one. Yeah, too fancy for my taste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we get a brief explanation of Don Creed's Jolly Roger. Mm. The hourglass. You want to explain that one for us? Yeah. So let me find it. The Jolly Roger has two hourglasses on it, which symbolize his opponent's time coming to an end. Is that right? Yeah, it's like the, the times run out. It's like when you, when you see the skull, you know your yeah, times run out. Run out. That That's such fun. a cool, like very piratey kind of explanation for a Jolly yeah. Roger. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here, here's a picture of it. Yeah, it looks like the Jolly Roger's times run out. Ho ho! Hey ho! Oh, <laughs> yeah, I I like the dichotomy, uh, the comedy of the um. The cooks having like these opposite um, ways of approaching the situation. How everybody, including like the patrons of the restaurant, everybody's saying they should just let Krieg die. And then Sanji is very adamantly standing his ground, even though he knows everybody else is against him. He's outnumbered. He's like, I'm gonna get the food anyway. So he's very adamant about serving Krieg, even though he knows it's not a good idea. Yeah. He knows that Krieg is probably not going to honor his word. But that's not Sanji's concern. His only concern is getting him some food so he doesn't die of starvation. I wonder why. Um, I know why, but it's cool to the laying the hints of just why this like idea of feeding the hungry is so important to Sanji, and it makes you you're like, man, well, what's what's the, what's your? It feels like this is a more personal motivation here, and uh, it lays the groundwork for that. Well, and it, it, it's it comes back in the next few chapters too. I think it, like. You can tell Oda's really trying to drive that point across. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then also with the mushrooms with Usopp, like Sanji is telling Usopp to eat everything on this plate, even if he doesn't like it. Yep. Don't, don't waste the mushrooms. No, no, clean your plate, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love the little tiny little glimpse of uh, uh, Johnny and Yosaku, like, brother set sail, we don't want to die. <laughs> They're like covered in bandages and just lying in cots on the ship. Like, oh, yeah. we're, <laughs> we're still here. Like, <laughs> as far as to those two guys, like the types of like those those funny characters and stuff like this, I'm I'm a fan of those two. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm. It's it's it feels like. Yeah, it it is crazy seeing. Oh yeah, also like Gein being like, "Don't don't grovel, Don Krieg. Oh oh, Dad, <laughs> not no. you. This is not you. Where's where's your pride? <laughs> He's crying a single river of tears. Oh no, that's his arm. My bad. That's his arm. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> that's his arm. Um, but he's still crying, and it's 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 a it's quite the image. Yeah. God, the kick that that Patty gets on the next page too is just so. Oh, yeah, his his cheek is like an entire loaf of bread. Like it's just yeah. like <laughs> it's a huge bean that is just now like formed on the side of his face. I love it. Oh, it's cool because if you go from like that page to the next page, it basically kind of lines up where Patty and Krieg are in the same position, and Sanji's in the same position. But Sanji is now the one being attacked as opposed to the one doing the attacking. Yeah. It's like the panel layout is very similar. Oh, so it's yeah. kind of cool turning the page like that. I just noticed it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Krieg is ready to take this ship. He's got ready his full rank back. One meal. Ready to go. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. 
So let's move on to the next chapter. Uh, so starting with the cover story. Uh, Buggy's crew after the battle, part nine. You're a strange creature, too. <laughs> <laughs> Gaimon and Buggy now seem to be getting along as they party with some animals from the forest. So that took a turn. So they, sure they have apparently a uh, uh, buggy now. <laughs> I mean, he is a weirdo on the They're island of weirdos. over there, spotness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, How did you chapter. So What's up? No, so they're just bonding over how they're both squat little people. <laughs> Doesn't it kind of look now? like <laughs> this um, rabbit snake is eating a devil fruit? Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. Was that uh, yeah, it looks like a, um, very devil like a melon of some kind. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even notice him, though, at the bottom. Right? Doesn't it? <laughs> I, I did just notice he has like a fluffy rabbit tail at the end as a snake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, chapter 47, The Don's Offer. The cooks are in disbelief that Krieg wants the ship as the customers flood out the doors to leave. Krieg demands the cooks to prepare meals for the other 100 men on his ship and makes it clear it's not a request. Gein apologizes to Sanji as he never intended for this to happen. Sanji makes his way to the kitchen to start preparing the orders. The other cooks refuse and point the guns at Sanji to stop him. Sanji says they can fire at him, but it's his duty to feed people regardless of the circumstances. Patty attacks Sanji, telling him that he's wrong. They outnumber Krieg, so they should take him on. Patty pulls out a cannon and shoots it right at Krieg, blasting him through the doors. Turns out Krieg was wearing heavy armor and was unfazed. He is not happy as he starts firing at the staff with hidden guns that were in his armor. Krieg reasserts his dominance and demands that they follow his orders. Zeph comes in and drops a large bag full of food, enough to feed 100 of Krieg's men. Zeph doesn't seem to be intimidated as he mocks Krieg and his men for fooling the Grand Line. Krieg recognizes the former pirate's name, Red Shoes Zeph. All right, Evan, what would you think of this one? It's getting heated. <laughs> um, I think in this chapter, Luffy kind of has a moment of realization of Sanji's character, um, which seems to kind of be a trend with his crew building uh, tactics. He seems to like have an idea and ask someone to be in their crew, and he's immediately rejected in pretty much every <laughs> circumstance so far. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty much an immediate no. <laughs> um, and he still kind of stays resolute in that decision, but I feel like there's usually a moment, um, at least with Nami and uh, Zoro, where he kind of sees them um, like sticking up for what they believe in or like stay, staying strong and kind of showing like a strong character trait um and respects that and you kind of see that moment um i think there's kind of like a like a moment of like i think this is the cell where he's kind of just yeah. like he's like all right i i see you i get your spiel and i respect <laughs> that yeah and i think this was that moment for him and sanji where um they kind of had like a bonding moment not how, like, how even say like direct bonding yeah, I would say it even goes back even further, even to like when he saw Gein um, yes. getting the plate. I think totally. that was a moment for Luffy where he's like, "All right, Sanji, like I, I like your character, and like you're the person that I think is gonna fit good for my crew." Yeah, so I think these are moments that like reaffirms that, and like Luffy is definitely noticing Sanji sticking up for his beliefs here. Um, when all the cooks are pointing the guns at him, Sanji's not backing down. Like he's ready to die for like this. Right. Like, he, like they're not gonna shoot him, obviously. But I guess, like, if they're that desperate, they don't want Krieg to, to kill them. But, yeah, I, I think Luffy at least can recognize that Sanji is willing to go that far. For yeah. His belief. So his Luffy respects line. that. Yeah. But that, that is a cool panel. Uh, both of them, when uh, they, they, like, pull up the guns on him. Yeah. And then uh, when he's very, like, yeah. John Woo-like or, like, 
very movie pose almost like yeah it's not, it's not quite a mexican standoff because sanji <laughs> does not have any guns but <laughs> it's a barati standoff yeah uh, <laughs> a standoff um uh, I love Patty's uh, meatball launcher. This uh, yeah. <laughs> that he just pulls out of his pulls out of his ass. Oh wait, no, no, no. He has like it wrapped up, but I don't know where he gets it from. He kind of just walks off and then comes back and after they hold Sanji down. Yeah. Oh, did he? Yeah, he has it, like wrapped up or something over. He here? has it wrapped up, but before that, he he see, it's like Patty, hold him down, and then he comes back. I I assume he walks into like another room. There's like a minute there where he walks in, yeah. comes back out with the meatball launcher. <laughs> it's like if you need your meatballs real fast, like you can get them to you, or if he needs to fight somebody off. Yeah, either yeah. way. I also I close. appreciate Patty being like, "Hey, look, I know you feed like the people that I chase out of here, and you know what? You might be right to do that a lot of the times, but not this time. This guy <laughs> is too much." <laughs> um it's it's pretty surprising introspection from a character who who likes calling people squid face or whatever <laughs> um but i i do think that's that's a, an interesting point how he does concede to sanji like you know feeding people even though he he's been like chasing them off so you can at least like see that much but at, at this point he also is firm in his beliefs so you have two people who are being very firm in their beliefs and how to handle the situation Mm -hmm. So they're on the opposite sides. And it's weird because I feel like they both agree with each other, even though they're kind of going opposite ways. Like they and, both um, the fact that like I understand where you're coming from, you know. Okay, so you're saying like they like understand each other's perspective? Yeah, they're they're still like resolute in what they want to do, but I feel like they kind of understand the other person's perspective. Mm, yeah. Even like like when he mentions like Sanji's um tendency to like help these people that he scares off he was kind of like i respect that but not this time <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i he love he, like doesn't like this guy he just feels this need to help him in this situation because he's in need mm. you know it's definitely nothing yeah. personal for the person it's more of his own personal belief of you know he sees a pirate in need of a meal and he feels obligated to to provide them with that food. Yeah, he sees it as his duty as a duty, yeah. As a, a chef. Um yeah, if somebody's hungry, he feeds them. It's as simple. He doesn't want to get too complicated with it. Right. Uh I loved I remember I it's something I remembered as a kid and uh Krieg's description of his various gear, specifically his woot steel. Which yeah. as a kid, I I assumed was just some made up term in the One Piece universe. It's not. It's a real thing. Um, it's the kind of another name for like the original version of Damascus steel made in India. Like it's hmm. uh, one of the earlier versions of like f strong forged steel. Uh, so Krieg is packing some like actual historical quality armor here um <laughs> and his, his his diamond fists feels a bit much that feels a bit <laughs> over the top but the woot steel seems authentic <laughs> yeah that, that's just for the blank it's not really functional. yeah just i don't know how, how functional it. that really is but yeah i'm mean, sure it'll hurt but yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i think he, he does say he'll demolish anything so he, he doesn't use it as a weapon yeah i think like using the term of that what did you say it was woot right like, woots woots a w-o-o-t-z i don't know i feel like there are I, I noticed more so in this volume than other volumes there were like a few words that felt a little out of place and i know that joel's kind of spoken to this in the past on like the translation just kind of like not being quite fluid like fluid with the rest of the book and i, I felt that a few times in this volume where it was like a really random word that i either had to like look up or just thought felt kind of out of place and i wonder if that's something that's just kind of like lost in translation where like they it's like it's like oddly specific words mm, yeah um, I, I don't have like a list of examples but i think like that that was one of them with the metal um yeah, yeah I, I don't know thing. yeah i really want to know what the original japanese text does say in these cases like i was saying like yeah. even like in um like chapter one and Luffy uh, called Taguma McCake. Yes. Like, was it, that seemed like a very like oddly specific term to use. 
So yeah, again, I don't know what the the text said, but yeah, like like you were saying, I don't know in this case either. So I'd be really interested to see what it does say in the original text. There's there's one later in this book that um, I think it's Zoro says the gulf of difference in our like skill level or something like that. And I thought that was like a very unique use of that word, and also kind of a piratey use of that word. Mm. But another one that was just kind of like oddly oddly specific, like you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that they also are, are using things like I a lot instead of yeah mm -hmm. uh so again i think st they're still playing up like the like the piratey language yeah uh but i like how krieg is compensating for his lack of like capability by having like 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 you know this fancy armor he tries to have this fancy ship he tries to have like all these people behind him so he doesn't actually have this true power but he he perceives that all these things are what makes him a great pirate and why he's going to be the best but it's things that are making up for his lack of ability mm -hmm. yeah he's more of a mr moneybags than he and in a way than he is a fighter in the sense that he just he bought all these weapons presumably i doubt he created them necessarily <laughs> yeah um, and just tried to of, design them yeah. yeah filled them all to the to the like I mean, it, it's in a, in a certain sense, it's cool, but in a certain sense, it's also like, well, okay. But I, I, I just ate a fruit and my, my arms grow long. So mine, mine is cooler than you. I didn't have to buy this. <laughs> He's like those whales that like put all this money into like uh, video games. <laughs> when like everybody's like grinding for it, they just buy everything outright. Creek just like, like bought it. the battle pass. He bought the season <laughs> pass. He bought the ultimate edition. And he's just like, I'm the best now, right? I got all these pre order bonuses. Like, yeah, just skip right to the I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was another thing though? I was gonna. Oh, then we get the red shoe Zeph. Mm, yes. What's that about? I pieced it together as a kid, I think. But yeah, the and Zeph and Zef comes out and just settles the whole matter. Like, so he's willing to 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 go for this because he does not seem intimidated by Krieg, as you said, Joel. So yeah. Um, I wonder if he's he maybe he and Sanji are more. Uh, on tune on this than we thought. Yeah, there's definitely something more there. Yeah, when I heard when I read Red Shoes Zeph for the first time, like it kind of made me think of red haired um red haired shanks, yeah. Shanks, yeah. Red haired shanks, oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't even put that together, yeah. <laughs> um just because I was like the, I don't know. I'm like maybe he was part of like red haired Shanks' crew, and they all had like a red themed uh, ability. <laughs> it was like the red squad. Like, got red haired Shanks. We got red shoes over here. We got red jacket. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. have like uh, like red gloves, Jeff, or something. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta have like the whole set. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That was like my like first reaction was like maybe he was a part of red haired um, Shanks' crew. <laughs> oh, who knows. Well, I mean, we find out. We'll find we find out the backstory. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we move on to the next chapter, I also wanted to point out in the SBS um, that there was a character that popped up uh, in the last volume called Panda Man. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yes. I feel like, I feel like um, you know, we'd be miss missing out if we didn't mention Panda Man. And uh, I'll be honest, I never catch his appearances. Me neither. I, I never notice where they are. Um, but I wanted to mention this for Evan because he's never been introduced to Panda Man. And we didn't talk about it last volume where he, he was, but I did go back and look for him. Uh, he's basically um, in chapter 44 uh, in volume 5, page 182. He's in between like two little speech bubbles. Mm. Um. Well, actually, they're kind of large speech bubbles. But yeah, he's a character that's going to just kind of pop up in the background as like a little gag. So he, he's just going to periodically show up in like random chapters. He's the Where's Waldo of One Piece. Exactly. Way, yeah. So it's like it's like Where's Waldo, but you never that's know awesome. when he's going to pop up, and he's just going to be there sometimes. <laughs> I love, and he says that he's the wrestler, and that yeah. he'll introduce him properly next time. 
so yeah, I just want to point out we did miss the uh, first appearance of Panda Man, uh, but there will be many more. And we will miss those too. Cool. <laughs> okay. Any final thoughts before moving on to the next chapter? Let's see exactly how much Krieg is willing to bring to this uh, confrontation. He's got any more guns under his coat? <laughs> yeah, I'll have more shrimp cannons. Yes. <laughs> Meatball cannons. Meatball cannon. Uh, I also thought um, it was interesting to note that uh, Kree says he's never lost, but I guess he wasn't counting when he was on the Grand Line and came back with his tail between his legs. Mm. Yeah, but... <laughs> 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 not not sure if he's just saying, oh, that was like a real fight. Oh, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> that one didn't count. Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just wanted to uh, call him out on that one. <laughs> How could you call As, him? At this point, we don't know it's a, it was a fight at all. Well, we know he yeah. came back, uh, you know. Ian Bruce, for sure. Yeah. So All right. did not go his way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, chapter 48, Steer Clear. Krieg, I'm sorry, actually, uh, Buggy's crew after the battle, part 10. Farewell to friends. Buggy says a tearful goodbye to Gaimon and the forest animals as he departs once again on a small raft. So I guess that's the yeah. only way that Buggy knows how to travel now. Pretty much. Small rat. <laughs> With a tear streaming on his Small face. Buggy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, chapter 48, Steer Clear. Krieg is surprised to find out the famous Red Shoe Zeph is still alive. Zeph comments that he's just a chef now, but Krieg wonders if it was by choice or was being a pirate too much for the man. Krieg explains how Zeph was known for his powerful kicks and earned the nickname from the blood of his enemies covering his shoes. The rumors were that he had died at sea, but he didn't lose his life, just one of his legs. Krieg knows Zeph has been to the Grand Line and demands that Zeph hand over his log. Zeph acknowledges that he has one, but refuses to give it to him. Krieg says he'll just have to take it by force. He has the strength, men, and ambition, he was just lacking the knowledge he needed to succeed and now needs their ship. The cooks stand firm to defend Zeph. Krieg announces that he's the strongest of them all and will be claiming the One Piece. That gets Luffy angry, so he steps in to tell Krieg that he's the one who will be the King of the Pirates. The cooks are surprised that the chore boy would get involved, but Luffy says that he can't stay out of it any longer. Zoro and Usopp get ready to step in, but Luffy says that he's got this. Krieg laughs that Luffy expects to survive the Grand Line, uh, with such a small crew. Krieg's fleet was wiped out in just seven days. Krieg takes the food to bring to his men, declaring that if anyone is still here when he gets back, he'll wipe them all out and take the ship along with the log. Gein apologizes to Sanji for bringing his captain here, but Zeph tells Gein that it's not his fault. The cooks all complain that he's taking Sanji's side. Zeph puts them in their place when he points out that none of them have, have experienced starvation before. If they went... If they want to complain, they can leave, but they all decide to stay and fight. Gein calls them all fools. Sanji tells Gein that he'll feed a man if he's hungry, but he has no problem beating someone to death once their stomach is full. If the pirates try to take the ship, he'll take them all on without mercy, including Gein. Luffy tells his crew that he has to take on Krieg as someone who has been to the Grand Line. Luffy tries to get information about the Grand Line from Gein, but he says he's not really sure what happened himself. All of a sudden, on the seventh day, the ships were all defeated by one man. A man with piercing hawk eyes that could kill with a glance. So a turn of events. Not the first mention of hawk eyes. <laughs> yeah. I even mean, like his, his full name. He just has hawk eyes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it wasn't serious. Typhoon. It was just one man. Yeah. yeah. That's what they can expect going to the Grand Line. Here's the Sometimes. silhouette that we get. That's true. Another silhouette. And another perfect example of like that flashback memory. Vague but vivid. I'm really digging that. Yeah, that, that's a cool. Oh, and right below that, Usopp's reaction. Incredible. What is that one again? 
This is when they learned that it was one man that took down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> His and mouth opens face. so <laughs> large. Yeah. Incredible. God. It's like, God, the it's Beetlejuice all... monster. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like a monster for sure. Oh. We get some solid uh, Zeph backstory. Yep. So we get the and reason behind the, the shoes. Yeah. Yep. yep. I can um, also feel Luffy's eyes light up at the mention of a logbook that explains the uh, Grand Line <laughs> or like secrets of the Grand Line. It's like Luffy wouldn't bother to read it though, and then if somebody tried to read it to him, he'd probably just like fall asleep anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> but he's gonna want that, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Um, there is. What was I gonna say? Um... I love the immediate. There, there are two more. He's still counting in Sanji when Krieg's like, "Oh, you're oh, pretty <laughs> thin," and he's like, "Um, it's already done deal." <laughs> yeah, when he already Nami seems to be gone. Where'd she go? I wonder. Yeah, we haven't seen Nami in a little bit. We have yeah. not. Um, maybe sh no, no. <laughs> I love how big that bag is. It's just so like. Also, like, is that what is? Did he did he individually package each one of those meals, or is it just <laughs> a mass of rice? Is the jo I? <laughs> yeah, and like, when did he start preparing this? Like, was like as soon as like like he knew Krieg was like on his way? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, I get it. He's a really good chef, but come on. <laughs> the big doggy bag. It's just like it's like hundred <laughs> like hundred hot pockets. He just kind of like threw them all in at once. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. When you're that hungry, yeah, you could it could just be a bunch of old tablecloths, and I'd probably still go for it. Um, he really is going full Doug Dimondome, Jeff's Zeph's hat, and that take I'll take it from you, uh, pan page on like six or six on my app, but it might be different in the physical book. Yeah, I'm back to the the physical volume, so it's like taking longer to like go page through. six of that chapter. But yeah, it's oh, I mean, I can't. I've tried this every time, and it's just it's too much <laughs> yeah. of a glare. But it's a really tall hat. I love Zeph's incredibly tall oh, yes. hat. There we go. Um, <laughs> yep, there it is. Yeah, it's just just oh, hitting okay. the ceiling. Like it really is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love Krieg's giant shoulder pads with his emblem on it. This man understands branding at the very mm -hmm. least. Gein <laughs> continue. Gein continues to be very yeah. Um, very sad, and then but then Zeph's like, Oh, you, none of you understand what starvation is like, right? Which implies some things, um, yeah. And I like how we see that panel of Sanji right next to him, like Sanji's just very quiet. Mm hmm, he's just lighting another cigarette, yeah, just lighting a cigarette, yeah. or or finding another lollipop, of course. Yeah, I like how Zeph also doesn't blame uh, Gein. Oh, the lollipop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's Gein. He's getting off pretty easy here. Potentially understandably, but I still, I don't know if I'd be so quick to be like, oh, it's all good, buddy. You're just, <laughs> you're, you're, your boss is just going to come back and kill us all, but it's all it's all chill. Um, but I think Sanji kind of sums it up like perfectly here. Like, uh, as soon I'll be facing plunderers with full stomachs. So if I have to beat your mates to death, don't complain. Uh, <laughs> if they try to take over the ship, I'll slaughter them without mercy. And that goes for you, too. So basically, he's like, I have no problem feeding you. But, you know, we'll just have to fight you off at full strength. Like, I have no problem yeah. killing you in that way. But there's, as long there's, as there's, die, there's, there's a, like, stomach. starvation, no go. Internal bleeding, I'm fine with that. Like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> at least you won't be hungry. <laughs> All right. Um, any other closing thoughts before we move on? I'm ready to continue the. I don't know. This Hawkeye sounds pretty strong. I feel Hawkeye like sounds more pretty, more pretty Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Yeah, I feel like there's a little bit more table setting with with this chapter. Um, okay, so let's get into chapter 49, Storm. Everyone is surprised by the revelation that Krieg's Armada was defeated by one man. Zeph points it out that uh, it must have been Hawkeye. Zerl tells him that this is the man he's been looking for. 
Sanji asks if they did something to upset him, but Gein doesn't think so. Luffy is excited to go to the Grand Line upon hearing this, and Zoro reaffirms that he needs to go there to find Hawkeye. On Krieg's ship, his men eat up to regain their strength. They are relieved to have survived until Krieg tells them that they are going back to the Grand Line. One of his subordinates questions why they would go back to face certain death, so Krieg shoots him. There are no further objections as the pirates begin their raid on the Baratier. The cooks prepare to defend as the pirates rush in. Suddenly, Krieg's ship is cut down in the middle, causing it to start to sink and creates large waves. Zoro is concerned about Johnny and Yosaku, who are on their ship. They are in the water, swimming over, as they tell Zoro their ship is gone, along with Nami. She sailed off with their ship and all of their treasure. At the same time, Hawkeye has arrived. Da doom! Dun dun doom! <laughs> Oh, that's where Nami is. Uh, <laughs> By the way. Uh oh. <laughs> this yeah, one so goes. This is a pretty pretty quick chapter. But yeah, it goes some pretty crazy yeah. things that happen. There's some really good stuff in this chapter. And this <laughs> is also the chapter where Zoro um, says, "The day he decided to be the world's greatest sor swordsman, I gave myself up for dead," which is pretty serious. But also, I think that, like, that lends perfectly to his character. And also, um, I also think Luffy's character is kind of very comparable in that sense. Like, Zoro wanting to be the greatest swordsman in the world. And Luffy mm -hmm. wanting to be the king of the pirates. I feel like they're both so dedicated and motivated towards that goal that, like, literally anything else just is, like, a stepping stone to get there. Or, like... yeah. Like anything, anything that's not the greatest is just an obstacle in the way. And I, you know, I think it leads Zoro for his hunt for Hawkeye and like um, Luffy with being like, yeah, I can take on this pirate with, um, uh, who am I thinking of? Oh, with Krieg. Yeah. And being like, yeah, I need to be Krieg because he's another pirate. And if I'm going to be king of pirates, obviously I'm going to have to fight this guy. So, like, right. Um, you yeah, know, like I, if he like couldn't be that, like, everything just feels like something they have to do to get there. Yeah, yeah, like, like, uh, like There's you're no saying, um, like if Luffy came and beat Krieg, then it's like his goal is basically like dead in the water. Or like when Zoro is fighting like uh, Kabaji back in the um, like the Orange Town arc, how it's like if I if I came and beat like, Kabaji like this, and like I have no right to like pursue the goal of being the greatest swordsman. So they they like you said they see these like these characters as obstacles that would like prove their ability if they can't get past this then right. it's like they don't have what it takes anyway right it's almost like nothing is insurpassable because they're aiming for the top so they have to surpass everything it's mm -hmm. like not even a thought of like no maybe i should this is good i'm good here maybe i should yeah. give up or like <laughs> you know i'm gonna settle and just uh you know be the second best pirate like yeah. <laughs> that's, no, that's I cool that's not an option it's like so right. to you know, I have to do everything that it takes. And so that kind of means, you know, commit fully, like fully committing yourself to something. And I think exactly. Sanji, Sanji kind of says that in this chapter, um, which is pretty badass. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, this gets so good. <laughs> um, Ashwan, did you have something? I mean, yeah, there's... I love the little panel of uh, Zoro whacking Usopp on the side of his head with the butt of his sword. Um, <laughs> as a man, I must agree. Stonk, right. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, that last, well, not to rush to the end here, but that the, 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 the double wide panel of the ship getting cut in half is just, there's so much detail. It's and amazing. It's super good. Yeah, I was, honestly, I was honestly a little confused because I had no idea what to expect or what was causing the damage. And so, like, at for like my first impression of this panel, it almost looked like a giant creature was kind of like pulling the ship down. Yep. Because you can see these like almost talon looking uh, features on the ship. So I thought it was maybe yeah. like a giant sea monster that was just like devouring the ship. 
and those were that's like just talons yeah or something. that's actually just part of the ship but yeah but that's actually yeah it's just a detail of the part of the ship because it's kind of like has this almost like panther i don't know jungle cat kind of yeah yep mass head and then like these big like claws coming around i mean i find out soon what actually caused it but like <laughs> there, there's no clear reason rhyme or reason for the ship kind of imploding you know yeah and I, everybody else around them is confused too so yeah you're not the only one yet. <laughs> i kind of thought it was like a giant sea creature at this point just because which is totally understandable the talons might have been something yeah because we didn't know exactly what took place and like right. what's happening now is there like something else coming up like and it's like then we get the like reveal um at the end we see like that that mihawk follow them here yep yeah everybody else like thought there was like an yeah. explosion Krieg, <laughs> Krieg's mouth it's almost as big as Usopp's when he says what happened yeah um, I mean Usopp's goes off the out of the cell <laughs> yeah he's he's got him beat a little bit <laughs> I mean, and some gaping mouths on this page for sure i think krieg's teeth are as large as like my fingers like at least <laughs> as long as my fingers i love that um i don't have a ton to add on like just exactly what happens uh, i i mostly i just point out art details which i feel a little bad about but it is no, kind of no. just like i want to get to next chapter is where the action really oh, so good but um i do love the one of Krieg's crew members just says war on the back of his shirt when they're partying <laughs> about just like okay I that guy yeah. that guy knows what he's about like <laughs> <laughs> um and i there is a little detail though maybe tying into the whole jungle cat aesthetic that never quite coalesces in a way or, or isn't really brought up directly but after they finish eating they all like howl like wolves or cats or something i suppose <laughs> so and when creeks first giant roar. Reason, he has like a leopard print shirt he does yeah hmm. and there's this other guy too that has like polka dots on his shirt so, so yeah something there going on they're, they're not quite as into the theme as the black yeah pirates, or, but, the, or the or the buggy pirates or the buggy pirates it's good but, stuff. I mean, what? You got 5,000 men? I mean, that's got to be an exp it'd be expensive to get costumes for everyone. Exactly. Yeah, actually, um, yeah, I just noticed this, this other guy, too. Um, yeah, Evan, in the volume, it's page 95. Mm -hmm. um, there's a guy on the left-hand side that looks like he has like a like a cat hat on or something. Oh, yeah. Like a little leopard hat. Yeah, like a leopard hat. Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or it's like <laughs> Polka Dot Panda Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, maybe maybe that's kind of like they're low key, like not really committing to that theme, but they're like little bits of flair, kind of, kind of our brand. Yeah, a little bits of flair. Yeah, a lot of these chapters like are kind of leading into like they're they're building. A lot of these are kind of building on each other. So I think this is where it works well, reading it in a volume as opposed to if you're going like week to week, mm -hmm. because like it's we're basically getting the full story. Uh, for like what's going on as we read uh, so I think it works better in that way so yeah on, on individual level some of these chapters are a little bit lighter on like plot details but there's a lot of like building going on or just like little moments in between or like, things that people are saying mm -hmm. uh, but as for plot wise there may be not, not so much to talk about yeah. um, we get a little Nami send off at the end yeah it's very mm -hmm. Nami very Nami See you later, guys. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take the treasure and go. Yeah, so long. Give the others my best. Tell them I hope we meet again. No hard feelings, right? Yeah. Water under the bridge or water under the ship I stole. <laughs> um, yeah, the merry go has been fun. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. I guess we'll never see Nami again, ever again. Yeah, yeah I, I really thought she was going to be like like a full-time member of the crew. And then, and then nope. she just like takes off, and it's like, oh, okay, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. Not my favorite decision Oda's ever made, but I don't know, part of the story. <laughs> uh oh, it's him. Hmm? I'm just quoting Zeph right after that, where he oh. sees oh, oh. on that ship. <laughs> yes, oh, it's him. Yeah. With a shadowy figure approaching. <laughs> All right, so you, are you ready to move on to the next chapter? Let's do it. Let's do it.
Okay, so uh, let's get into the next cover story. Buggy's crew after the battle part 11. A new friend. Buggy's raft is attacked by a giant crab. Some friend. Yeah. <laughs> term friend loosely. Although the crab does have a really big smile. Yeah, so you know, this is just his way of saying hello. <laughs> Okay. It was a pretty, uh, it was a pretty uh, shabby um, raft, so yeah. <laughs> it did not take much to get yeah. it. Chapter 50, A Parting of Ways. Everyone is confused as to what happened to Krieg's ship. Did something explode? Johnny tells Zoro and the others what happened with Nami. Nami is looking at a wanted poster, but the bounty hunter has warned that Nami should stay away from that one, even though the 20 million berry bounty reward would be nice. Nami begins dragging the treasure from the bounty hunter's ship, but they tell her they aren't planning on staying on the Mary. Nami needs to change her clothes, so she politely asks them to turn around before pushing them overboard. Nami explains that she steals from pirates and never swore allegiance to Luffy, though she did have fun while it lasted. She took off with the ship just before Krieg's ship caused the large waves. Luffy points out that he can still see the ship. Luffy asks for Johnny and Yosuke's ship so they can go after her. Luffy will not accept anyone else as their navigator. Zoro reluctantly agrees to follow his captain's orders, and uh, Usopp wants to save the ship Kaya gave them. Luffy needs to stay behind and help the Baratier. At this moment, Krieg's crew shouts that Hawkeye has tracked them down. Everyone is confused that Hawkeye could have destroyed the ship as they didn't see any large weapons. Zeph clarifies that he carries a large sword on his back. He is the greatest swordsman in the world. Krieg's men lose all hope as their attacker is back to finish them off just for fun. The pirate tries to shoot the swordsman, but Hawkeye, Mihawk, deflects the bullets to alter their trajectory. Zoro admires Mihawk's skills and challenges him. Mihawk recognizes their vast difference in skill uh, without even having to lift his blade and wonders where Zoro's confidence comes from. Back over on the Mary, Nami thinks back about how she would like to meet her friends again someday. She, set, uh, she sheds tears as she says out loud to Bellamere, she just wants to be free. Bellamere. I was wondering how to pronounce that. <laughs> as a kid, I pronounced it Belmare, but that's how I would probably would <laughs> I think I've heard people say Belmere, um, but I I go with Belamere. Works for me. And I think that's the way that the dub pronounces it as well. That's what I've been going off of. It's supposed to be French, right? Or something? Or... Yeah. It's at this point where I realize we haven't really gotten much Nami backstory, have we? No. no. Maybe we will someday. If she ever <laughs> comes back. If she ever comes back. If we ever see her again. I wonder who this bell mare is. Maybe we'll find nah, out. I, I think that's probably the last we really see of Nami. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I feel like she, she kind of comes in, she makes a splash, and then yeah. she kind of just like, just like when she came in, she kind of sneaks out. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Very much like a thief. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I do think uh, we get some interesting points in this, in this chapter. Uh, so we get confirmation that <laughs> What actually caused the ship to be destroyed was a sword. Yeah, wow. Not, not a storm, not like a cannon. Like this one dude with a sword took out like 50 ships. And a hell of a sword at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. This thing is no joke. Yeah. Black blade. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, any thoughts on this chapter? Oh, man. I feel like I've never been so hyped for a battle. And I am yeah. right at the end of this chapter. Like, seeing yeah. the two swordsmen getting ready to face off. Ugh, like, I mean, I feel like I've been waiting for this my whole life. Yeah, that, that's a cool panel. Like, back and Zoro like certainly has. Side by side with them and their swords. <laughs> and, like, his sword on his back is, like, huge. Looks like a yeah. crucifix. Like, it's massive. Yeah. He's got the, yeah. And he actually looks like Zoro. Like, I feel like uh, he looks like a person that should be named Zoro. <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> mm, much more Antonio Banderas than Zoro. Yeah. yeah. This, this, in the live action, this would be Antonio Banderas for sure. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, yeah, it's yeah, like it's we so we have cool. like uh, yeah, Zoro's dream is who this guy is. So we were just talking right. about how like they have to go over these obstacles and they can't take on these obstacles and they don't have what it takes. Yeah. So now we're right off the bat, Zoro has to face like the greatest swordsman in the world to prove himself. Right, and this is his dream. I mean, this is his opportunity to accomplish his dream, which is pretty wild. Kind of hard uh, opportunity to pass up, even if you, in your heart, you're like, I'm probably going to lose this. <laughs> right. But I get it. I don't think Zoro's even thinking that. No, he's just thinking this is like, got to be done. I time to prove myself. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I really have like all this build up to this fight. Like everyone's was saying, it's getting pretty hype. And, uh, Haw yeah. Hawkeye just yeah. feels like a character that was designed to be cool. Like, like mm -hmm. he so set true. out with like Oda was like, okay, yeah. I need to make this guy as cool as physically possible. Make give him a cool haircut, give him a cool beard, give him a cool outfit, give him a cool sword, give him a cool entrance, <laughs> give him a cool name. <laughs> Everything about this guy was like, we need this guy to make an impact, and it works. Yeah, even like his demeanor, he's just like so calm. Yeah, and like he's yeah. like he's not like phased at all. He's just like. I, like he, he knows like what he's worth. He's really cool. Yeah, even like his doom has like special text to it. Doom. <laughs> yes, there's been a yeah. yeah. No, there there's been a few uh, text changes in this volume. Krieg also had his own text earlier. Yeah. On his full. Yeah, he's been playing around with the different text. Uh, yeah, I've noticed that. Here's the other one. This is. Krieg's text. Oh, yeah, with the insolence, yeah. I'm digging it. I am also digging it. This one. Uh, Sean, were you going to say something? The, just mostly, again, just reinforcing the, yeah, the, the, the parallel between Zoro and, and Krieg with both. It, it's There's almost a little, like, this may not be intentional at all, but the doom behind uh the doom behind uh, Mihawk is a bit more... No, I guess they're kind of in the exact same position. But it looks almost... The way Zoro doesn't quite fill in the frame, it looks looser. But they're otherwise, it's exactly the same position, looking at the, 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 the lettering oh, there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Side by side? Um, yeah, I think hmm. so, yeah. Sorry, I'll tab for a moment. Yep, that's the one. Yeah. Um, And then finally, at the end there, uh, man, that is just... We see like the suit, like the incredibly over the top, not that it's not incorrect, but the anguish cries of like Usopp and you're like, okay, buddy, Captain Snotbill. But at the end here, Nami's face is just heartbreaking. Yeah, she's really tearing up. Yeah. Waterworks. So clearly something is going on there. Though again, we'll never see her again. So who knows? <laughs> but, but this is, I don't know. Like I said, we haven't really gotten any backstory from her. And at the end of this chapter, she says, I can't wait to be free. Bell Mare. So, mm -hmm. like, it's definitely a hint. I mean, it seems like an obvious hint towards her background. Like, maybe she's a thief because she owes a great debt to somebody. I mean, that's how it feels like. Um, but. Well, going back to volume two, she did say that her goal was to buy a certain island. Right. Yeah. You're right. But we really haven't gotten much detail in her backstory, though. Oh. Yeah, we don't know like what her intentions are. Right. Like, why is she doing this? Like, who is Bellamere? Who is Bellamere? Um, and like, she kept looking at this wanted poster. Is she on the next page? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, a mysterious hmm. woman. But, yeah, <laughs> a mysterious woman who looks like she could be named Bellamere. Uh, but yeah, like Nami was like looking at this wanted poster, like uh, in the last volume as well. When um, they dropped the wanted poster on the, on the ground, she picked one up. Yes. So this this wanted poster really got her attention. Thoughts? No, well, I have I thoughts. thoughts. No. Yeah. So I don't know how much. <laughs> well, I can my add. thought was like, I don't know. I feel like it would be wild if it was like Shanks. Mm. Oh, yeah. That would have been a twist. Because that would be a good <laughs> twist later on. Yeah. See, this word's fun because he's a pirate you that can probably speculate. has a large bounty. You know, who's relevant to this crew? So that's my that's my yeah. guess. Yeah, maybe like Oda's trying to hide something from us that yeah. like uh, he doesn't want us to know yet, and that how it's gonna come into play later. So yeah, this is where it's like fun because you can kind of speculate and you can start throwing ideas out and see where 
you can start putting the pieces together and kind of see where things are building towards. Yeah. I feel like there aren't really any hints, so I'm just kind of just kind of a blind there, there's a guess. few. There's a few. But not not much. You'll see. Yes. You it'll think, it'll think, I think we, we talk about most I'm, of them. I'm, I'm, a month or two from now you'll understand more. <laughs> um you you think it should be obvious who she's looking at? Oh no, no, no. No, 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 not that. No, no. Now I'm curious. <laughs> now I'm real curious. <laughs> You're talking about the main dish, is all I can say. <laughs> Ooh. Damn. Um, we're heading, <laughs> we're heading to that. Um, but, uh, yeah. Great stuff. Yeah, I'm, this is really. He blocks the, the, so he doesn't even cut the bullets in half. He just deflects them and they yeah. keep traveling. That's the, that's the wild yeah. part. Is that the idea that, like, he doesn't even just like, ding, 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 ding them away or something. Yeah. This is like move them to the left a bit so they dodge my face. Like that yeah, is, he, he is... basically like, doesn't like have to move his arm that much. He basically has a sword in place and just kind of like tilts it at an angle. They'll, they'll just bounce right off. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's like, the kind of thing Zoro makes. Yeah, like, exactly. Well, uh... he, he says Zoro says deflected, but like in my mind, deflected means like ding, and then they fly back at the sender. But like he doesn't even. Here's the thing with Mihawk. I feel like is he doesn't even care enough to send it back to them. Right. He's just like, please don't disturb me. I'm sitting down and thinking. Like, <laughs> like that's all it is. Doesn't he subtle, mention like, the subtlety of it? The subtle sword work is the best the way. Without subtlety, is a sword is but an iron bar. Mm. Right. Yeah. And everybody else thought they, that he missed at first. So like he made it look like they just missed, but he just like deflected it at an angle. So like the, the bullets kept going. Yeah. Ugh, reading this through, my eyes are like. Like, I'm, like, fully invested in this book at this point right now. I'm, like, so ready for this swordsman fight. Like, I'm yeah. so yeah. amped. Like, I feel like, well, like this it. is the first time there's been, like, real stakes with an opponent. Because I feel like I feel like he's clearly established himself as the most formidable opponent that we've seen so far. He's completely sidelined. He's, he's, si he's sidelined Krieg in his own arc. Which tells you, yeah, yes, enough, right? <laughs> totally. I was like, Kree, I'm like, Kree's fun, but he's like, I don't see him being like a formidable like opponent but in the long when, run, like, but right. But when Hawkeye makes his appearance, like, I don't know, there's a weight to it, and there's it's more serious. I feel like there's more at stake, and he is, you know, the ultimate opponent for Zoro. Like, this is his moment to achieve his dream of becoming the greatest. Sort of thing, so. In a certain yeah. sense, I'll say, Lay, like, not, I don't want to jump ahead too much, but it is in a kind of a way, it, it's a weakness and a strength of this arc in that it, Hawkeye just feels kind of disconnected from all of it. But that's also the intention is the idea that I, I like it is Hawkeye doesn't care that he's interrupting Krieg's grand plan. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't care that, like, this is Krieg's moment to be Krieg and rah, rah, rah. It's like, He's just doing what he's here to do, and whether if that interferes with the storyline, it doesn't matter. Like the world goes on. I love that. <laughs> yeah, and I think as the yeah. reader, you really get that because like Zoro's about to leave. He's about to go after Nami with Usopp, yeah. and they're almost like interrupted. And he's like, "Wait, who? Who just showed up? Oh wait, I gotta stick around." The guy <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been chasing for years now. Yeah. Like, okay, well, shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like. It's definitely upping the the stakes here because we're getting ready to go to the Grand Line. That's where they've been trying to get to for the past few volumes now. And we see Krieg coming back, so we know Krieg isn't the toughest out there. So we already know not to expect like the, the most out of Krieg. Totally. And so now we see who defeated Krieg. So now we can get a better sense of like how big this world is because we've seen how easily like Zoro and Luffy have been able to take on like their opponents so far. But now mm -hmm. we're getting these people who are showing up that are like way stronger than anybody we've encountered so far. So with, with Mihawk, he kind of gives a, a taste of what to expect on the Grand Line and what kind of characters we're going to be running into. Yeah, it makes this battle very exciting. It, it feels <laughs> like, if, like I said, the first battle with like real stakes, you know? Yep. Shit's about to... Uh... In the words of Martin Lawrence, I believe, shit just got real. Was that Will Smith? I can't remember. Oh, I feel bad. Oh, that was, I think it was Martin. I'm not going to fact check you. I'm just going to take a word for it. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I also like how Zoro is like eager to like step up and uh, face Nihawk. Yep. Uh, like he again, Zoro is that gumption. Basically, like I'm ready to to prove my worth. I I can I can take him on, and like Nihawk's like, where are you getting this confidence from? Like, like I like are you just like ignorant? And this is Zoro's like, like no, it's, it's ambition. Yeah, this is like an amateur boxer league goes to like a Muhammad Ali fight. It's like, <laughs> I'm up next. <laughs> it's <My> like, <laughs> straight ticket to the top. Watch out. Let's Future champ it. coming in. <laughs> I mean, watch out. What's that, Mike Tyson? No, it's <laughs> Dave Styles. So, so it's like, I don't know, like, Jimmy, Jimmy Scrambles coming up. Let's do it. <laughs> this will end great. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's uh, move on. Let's. Let's. Chapter uh, Buggy's Crew. <laughs> After the battle, part 11. No, I'm sorry, part 12. A Woman of Mystery. A mysterious woman fights off the giant crab and saves Buggy. So well, Mayor saves in, Buggy. Save day. Well, Mayor, it's her. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Elmir confirmed. Oh, no. <laughs> I would recommend right. continuing to not know. <laughs> Probably super wrong. I don't know. When I heard Bell Mare, I thought like Bell as in like woman and Mare as in C. I don't know. I actually, I don't, I don't know. know. You, yeah, I, I don't know either, but you. you could be right. Could be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I'm probably wrong. It was just. I'm like, not going to fact check you either. Joel is not in the mood to fact check tonight. It's probably <laughs> way off. Okay. Uh, chapter 51, Zoro Overboard. Zoro faces down Mihawk as the rest of the onlookers watch to see the confrontation. Even though Mihawk has a large sword strapped to his back, he removes his necklace to reveal a tiny dagger. When Zoro asks, what's that for? Mihawk responds that he doesn't hunt rabbits with a cannon. He goes on to explain that even though Zoro may have a reputation, the world is made up of four quadrants and the East Blue is the tamest of them. He then apologizes to Zoro that he doesn't have a blade even smaller to use against him. Zoro charges in with an Onigiri attack, which is easily blocked by the world's greatest swordsman. Zoro is in disbelief that his attack was stopped as if it was nothing, quickly realizing just how outmatched he is. Not giving in, he continues slashing away as Mihawk is able to block every blow. He thinks back to the promise that he made to Kuina, so he has to win. Johnny and Yosaku try to help out their friend, but Luffy holds him back to let Zoro fight his own fight. Zoro follows up with a tiger hunt attack, but Mihawk stabs Zoro with a knife through the chest. Zoro remains firmly in place, which causes Mihawk to question why he won't retreat. Zoro proclaims that even retreating one step will be the same as giving up on his ambition to be the greatest. Preferring death to admitting defeat, Zoro says that he won't retreat. Mihawk is impressed with Zoro's strength of spirit and asks for his name. Zoro proudly states his name as Mihawk removes the sword from his back in order to honor him by killing him with his sword. Zoro prepares his final attack as both dash in towards each other. 3,000 worlds. It's not enough. Mihawk breaks two of Zoro's swords as he cuts him across the chest. Zoro knows that he is no match. He spreads his arms as he faces Mihawk, prepared for death. He exclaims that wounds on the back are a swordsman's shame. Magnificent, Mihawk remarks as he slashes Zoro across the chest once again. Ugh. Okay, so Evan. So uh, good. What are your thoughts? <laughs> I mean, this is the best battle of this series so far, right? I mean, this has got to be. It's kind of my favorite chapter of the entire series. Like, time. it's got to be. Was, oh. That was my note, too. I said this is my favorite chapter of the series. Uh, it's it's this so is, good. This is where everything changes. This is where the whole series kind of turns on its head, and you're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. And I think, like, in this chapter, um, Mihawk like get, puts himself at a disadvantage, which is something that we've seen Zoro doing in previous fights because yeah. he feels like the superior fighter and knows he's a superior fighter. So he handicaps himself uh, to challenge himself, essentially. 
Yeah. Like, you know, if I can't beat him with this little knife, then I can't, then who am I? Right. Um, and so to see that happen to him, like have someone, <laughs> you know, not even wield their sword and fight him with like this little dagger, which was like the little cross pendant around his neck. Um, I don't know. I just like up the stakes so much. And the, the whole battle was, I was like, I, I was so invested. Like I was so glued to this book. I was just like, <laughs> nothing else was happening. I was like, in this, like <laughs> it was so good. Yeah. And, and Luffy's Luffy. I feel like, like, where is the scene? Hold on. Luffy, when he steps in and is like, like, no, let him have his moment. This moment. Yeah. He puts the brother's heads down. Yeah. Yeah. That, made, that was me reading this chapter. Like, I feel like yeah, that's right. <laughs> my emotions reading yeah, right. this chapter. I was just You're like, Johnny and Yosa. Oh, Carl, like, this is <laughs> it. Let's go. Um, Man. So good. And then when he's he's bested and says that he want to give up his back because you know that's like a swordsman a, sh a sign of weakness for a swordsman to have yeah wounds on your back so badass <laughs> and then uh the reaction from um mihawk is magnificent i thought that yeah. was such a good line like, that first, so good that that feels like to me when 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 he uh says magnificent to that that's the first blow zoro landed the whole fight that's the first time he hit mihawk yeah like if he if zoro had just been like oh shit whatever kill me i think that wouldn't have been enough um and then and mihawk was like whatever pathetic but by 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 being like i'm just gonna know like he's he recognizes for a split second a kindred spirit which leads to later developments yeah it kind of um, like raises an eyebrow yeah it's the it's, it's the only tender. time he actually kind of lands the tiniest of blows in a way on Miha. Um, right, and it's like a it's psychological really cool. blow. The way you're yeah, it. psychological yeah, blow. Great, yeah. I think that's a great that's a great, great description for because he does make that move and he he gives in essentially to say like you've bested me. You know, he like accepts that and is willing to you know suffer the consequences. And he tries to do it in the most honorable way possible, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, he also, in his internal in his internal monologue, after he says, I prefer death to defeat, he's like, what strength of spirit? So yeah. he's, he's, hmm. he's surprised there too, yeah. Um, and he also, he even, I, I don't know what the implication of this is, but when he does his three sword style secret move, Mihawk is sweating slightly and opens his eye and there's an exclamation point. Is that him being like, oh, okay, that's cool. I'm still going to beat you. I still can beat this, but that's a cool move. I don't yeah. know. I, I don't noticed know that, that too. I thought that was a cool that little yeah. sweat, like a bead of sweat, just kind of being like, okay, this guy is no joke, you know? I, I think it was yeah. like a modicum of respect, you know? Yeah, I guess so. What do you think, Joel? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Um, I Yeah, I think it's... Yeah, like like you're saying, just kind of like um, a sign of respect, kind of just like acknowledging, like, oh, maybe there's there's more to him than yeah than I thought. He's no slouch. I feel like the or sweat kind of catches him off guard, just like, like, like a little the, bit. The sweat was unnecessary. I think the eye and the exclamation point would have been enough. The sweat makes it feel like this took effort, which maybe it did, but clearly not that much. So I don't know. But uh, I think it's the sweat is nice because I also noticed that, like, very distinctly noticed the bead of sweat. You yeah. Know? I just don't know what it implies because the implication being that he's he's stressed right now, but he's clearly not. I feel like so. I don't know. Maybe it's just kind of like the way I'm kind of reading it is maybe it's kind of like I haven't been putting any effort into this fight at all, and now he's kind of like, oh, maybe I should pay more attention for this one yeah, second. Maybe, I don't think he's like yeah. actually worried, but I think it might have just been like maybe there's a little bit more to him than I thought. Yeah, like, again, I don't think he's actually worried in this case. I, I think, think it might that's just fair. kind of again another no, eyebrow raise kind of thing. It's not a perfect answer, but it works enough for me. And it's yeah. still again my favorite chapter I've read so far. Like Same. this is not agreed. I agree. This so is when I, as when I read this as a kid, the swordsman shame line and the magnificent like it 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 shook me for a moment. I was like, oh, I sat I sat there and re I reread this chapter <laughs> when I read it in the Shonen Jump like seven hundred times. Like I yeah, just, I just kept going over every detail. 
I was instantly, I was like, I want to know more about this guy. I want to know his life story. I want to know everything about Mihawk. <laughs> and guess what? You don't learn that much about him, and that's good. Uh, it's, it's. I'm glad that we're still like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Even today. <laughs> but, Definitely the best villain so far. I mean, he's so great. Oh, we'll get the villain rankings. I hope Joel is. Are we allowed to include him in villain rankings, Joel? Uh, Mihawk will not be on the villain rankings. See, I, I knew he was going to do this to us. Yeah. No, me, Mihawk. I don't consider Mihawk to be uh, like a true villain of the arc. He yeah. he's more like an adversary, um, an an obstacle. But I don't think he's a villain. He's not here to Cause basically trauma and death. Yeah, and ruin it. He, if they had left him alone, he would have left them alone. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Zoro challenges him. It's more like a challenge for Zoro, not necessarily like yeah. a villain for an arc. I get you. I get you. Cool. I mean, we, we we all know he'd be number one right now, but he'd be number one. He'd be number <laughs> one. So, Obviously. if anything, I suppose it just makes it too easy. So, <laughs> too enough. easy for sure. Yeah, like the the gap from Mihawk being so cool with everybody else right now, it's it's too vast. So, we'll just uh, leave it at that. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, I, I yeah I I love just like the way everything plays out in this chapter. I think it's like pitch perfect. Like just like the way it kind of builds up from Ooh, beginning. Anna, Anna Kendrick as Mihawk. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, the lamest, yeah, like, the lamest joke possible. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So Zoro, uh, basically, being like, yeah, I've been waiting for this day. Zoro's all confident. Mihawk's like, you're nothing. And then like everybody's kind of watching to see how this happens. And like you know, Mihawk pointing out the little blade, being like. I wish I had something smaller to take you on. I don't need this. Like, I that, was, this that was a know? low blow. Like. The disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then like Zoro kind of proving himself in one way. So not having like the swordsman skills to, to back it up, but he impresses Mihawk in other ways. Uh, but then like the way Zoro gets straight up stabbed. So we're like, now we're actually worried about Zoro. Um, yeah. <laughs> Looks like bro got stabbed in the heart. Yeah, I think he's like more like in the center, but pretty close. Um, and then, <laughs> yeah, and then just Mihawk kind of like warming up to to Zoro and kind of getting that respect. Um, so yeah, I, I like the way that that all plays out. Agreed. Oh, okay. um, also, um, yeah, we, we didn't talk about the what the East Blue actually is. Oh yeah, that the is kind of like dropped in land. totally randomly. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, was so it was just kind of slipped in there, but the now East we blue. know what the East Blue is. The East Blue is Weenie Hut Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Weenie Hut Jr. Yeah, the only reason why it is explained is because like Mihawk just wants to say, yeah, East Blue is like the weakest. Yeah, but yeah, th that's it. So there's like uh, it's broken up into the uh, North, East, West, and South. So it's just the way that the, the world is divided. So right now we're in the East Blue. And then you can get to the Grand Line from any of the other blues. But yeah, so... Finally, an explanation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been on the spine for... <laughs> every <laughs> every book so far. Yeah. Every book so far. <laughs> nice that we finally got an explanation of that. Mm -hmm. Pretty random, but I'll take it. <laughs> like, right in the middle of the boss battle. <laughs> like... Yeah. yeah, right in the middle of the belt with the boss battle. Yeah, it's let's like, just get a little bit of lore in here, real quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like how like Mihawk asks Zoro for his name because he wants yeah. to know. Um, he actually wants to know who's fighting now, and he takes out his actual sword. He's like, "I'm gonna put away the toothpick. I'm gonna you know fight the real sword. Give like an honorable death." And then yeah, like Luffy. Not interfering, respecting Zoro enough to let him fight his own fight because he has yep. confidence in Zoro. Uh, but then things <laughs> turn pretty quickly at the end here. Yeah. Zoro's not doing so good. All right. Um, so, any other thoughts before we move on? Uh, I mean, I hope Zoro's okay. He got <laughs> slashed across the stomach. So, here yeah. we go, I, I guess. Well, he got spoiled for us at the end of the last book. This was like the preview of if you turn it. Yeah. I'm not gonna read the end of this book, I'll tell you that much. 
<laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Stopping on the last. That, that was the preview page from Volume Five. Yeah. Yeah, that was the preview page. <laughs> but you so, can't look at the the first pages or the last pages of any of these books. I guess not. I think they like assume that you've read it before. Why would you assume that? <laughs> yeah, They're like oh, you must have been collecting it like uh, from Weekly Shonen Jump, so now you can yep. have it collected. There you go. I guess I'm too far behind. No, you're not. You're we you're right where you're supposed one. to be. We all were at one point, yeah. <laughs> all right, so let's go on to the next chapter. Chapter 52, The Oath. The crowd can't believe that the infamous Pirate Hunter Zoro was defeated so easily, which shows how powerful the Grand Line is. Zoro falls into the water as Johnny and Yosuku dive in to save him. Luffy stretches over to attack Mihawk, surprising everyone else that he has a Devil Fruit power. Mihawk dodges the attack with little effort, causing Luffy to crash into part of the ship behind him. Mihawk compliments Luffy for letting Zoro fight his battle to the end, but lets him know that he left Zoro alive. The pair of bounty hunters manage to pull Zoro aboard their boat. The world's greatest foreman, uh, I'm sorry, the world's greatest swordsman formally introduces himself as Dracul Mihawk clearly seeing something in Zoro. He encourages Zoro to grow, see the world, and challenges Zoro to surpass him someday. Mihawk then asks Luffy what his goal is, which is to be the king of the pirates, of course. Mihawk acknowledges that this is an even more dangerous path than Zoro's, but Luffy is not deterred. Usopp joins Johnny and Yosuku to tend to Zoro's wounds. They ask him to say something. Zoro raises his sword. He boldly declares to Luffy, I will never lose again. He asks Luffy if he's got a problem with that, but Luffy says not at all. Mihawk says that they make a good team, and he hopes to see them again someday. As Mihawk is about to take his leave, Krieg confronts the swordsman. Mihawk had come here to finish off Krieg, but he's had enough fun for now and would prefer to take a nap. Not ready to let his chance at revenge get away, Krieg starts blasting at Mihawk. Mihawk is barely inconvenienced and slashes towards Krieg before vanishing. This causes the remains of Krieg's ship to cause even more waves. Luffy orders Usopp to take Zoro away to go after Nami while he stays here to recruit Sanji. Now that Mihawk is gone, the Baratie still has to deal with Krieg. Luffy offers to take care of Krieg in order to pay off his debt to Zef, which Zef gladly accepts. Oh boy. Dracool, like as if you could be more cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. You might as well just be like, my name is Captain Darkness Damien Dracool the third. I love, I love Sanji. Dream. Abandon your stupid dream. Yeah, like Sanji's not getting it. Yeah. You're like Though it's a question I'd later ask Sanji too, like, "Oh, you're just gonna abandon him?" <laughs> <laughs> well, his dream doesn't involve physical combat, so <laughs> yeah, everybody's got their dreams. Yeah, I mean, seeing um, Zoro raise the sword in that scene was pretty great. Yeah, that's one making... of those most uh, iconic moments of the series. Yeah, and like making that promise to himself and to Luffy to never lose again. Yeah, like the, the face he makes. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to show that. Yeah. So much emotion. But I, I appreciate, I mean, credit to Luffy for diving in as soon as Zoro, he thinks Zoro was killed. And yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, real, real credit to you there, buddy, even though it doesn't seem to do much. <laughs> and then and Mihawk even shows respect for that. And then I, and, and like mm. at the end of this yeah. whole battle, Mihawk's kind of like pulls a Goku and is like, I'm not going to kill you this time. I want you to like get stronger so that we can fight again, which yeah. seems more of like a hero move than a villain move, you know? Yeah, I know. We can't put him on the villain ranking. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a formidable adversary, like, doesn't really seem to be villain or hero you know kind of Ad adversary yeah. is a good way rival adversary is a good way of putting yeah, it rival. yeah because he could easily come in here and take care of krieg and just resolve that whole issue totally. but he's like easily. he's like he's like i'm not even gonna bother at this point i've come here i i had fun did what i wanted to do i had a good day now i'm tired i'm gonna go take a nap 
So he, he knows when to call it. Uh, but yeah, he, he could easily dispatch like Krieg right now with a little effort. Probably yeah. get a good chunk of change for it. But <laughs> clearly money is not his primary goal. Then uh, he even like actively encourages Zoro to fight him someday. So again, like he doesn't want to kill Zoro because I think he's eager for the challenge. So I think he sees potential in Zoro. So he, he wants to kind of foster that and also challenge himself. So I guess kind of again the same thing we were just talking about, how like Zoro and Luffy were saying, if they can't defeat this opponent, then they have no right to call themselves like the best. Right. So I guess Mihawk's also going to try to challenge his skills by having Zoro kind of rise up too. Yeah, that's a good point. I like uh, Mihawk being like, what's your goal? I'll be king of the pirates. That's even more dangerous than me. <laughs> like, yeah. like, that's yeah. even, like, oh, shit. Like, that's <laughs> even harder than trying to get better than me. So good yeah. luck, buddy. <laughs> yeah. It was just really cool, I think, seeing Mihawk and Zoro's interactions this whole time. So we've gotten kind of like a taste of, like, swordsmanship and almost kind of there's almost kind of like a samurai like code of respect kind of vibe that Zoro kind of gives off and so it's cool, really cool seeing that mirrored with Mihawk and him also um like respecting Zoro's lifestyle and his choices and his dream um to the point where he's like I'm gonna spare you and I'd love to fight you again in the future when you're stronger because you know yeah. I think you would be a more formidable opponent you know, um, right. I think that was a very cool development for that that to take, and a big eye opener for Zoro, who yeah, who so far it has like just demolished everyone with no real difficulty. I feel Not yeah. an eye opener after had after he had his guts opened. Just <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> opener, eye opener, all the yeah, same, all the same. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of like uh, references earlier, but he uh, he called like. Zoro, uh, like a frog in a pond, mm-hmm. because just like it's a bigger world out there than he realizes. So I yeah. think Zoro is kind of getting like a reality check here, and that was probably necessary, even if a bit. Mm, yeah, he's been humble. Painful. Yeah. yeah. I was a really big fan of this spread. Yeah, all different characters, I, especially like Usopp's good. face in that one. <laughs> Usopp never fails to have a good Usopp face. <laughs> Sanji looking cool. Sanji looking cool. Everybody Luffy's eating, of course. Of course. Like I feel like this is pretty, pretty great. <laughs> Nami's making her a piece. I just took off with all your treasure face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's Nami doing there? She's not part of the crew anymore. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, thought she was gone. Yeah. Well, she's one of the characters that's had the most screen time up to this point. Yeah. So, so I guess they had to include her. Yeah. <laughs> she's one of the core three. I mean, this is this is really where it all took off for me, and and back in high school and whatever, like early college, I was just like, oh, okay, here we go, here we go. I was locked in, though. Again, this still didn't mean it was my favorite yet. It wasn't the mm. first one I read. It just meant I was committed to the series. It wasn't my favorite. Sh- it was my favorite chapter of this manga, but it wasn't my favorite manga in the Shonen Jump magazine yet. That's coming later. <laughs> this is where you kind of like raise your eyebrow like Mihawk when you're like, oh, yep. maybe this is I raised, this this is, character. This is me being like, surpass. I, I, st- I stood on the in the middle of the of the of the, of the apple. No, what is it? Chili? A cello? Cellos? A cellos? Cellos? Restaurant. Okay. Yes, a local, and it was like, strive to surpass me, One Piece. Strive to become my favorite manga. You have the potential. You need a sweat on his brow. Yeah, exactly. I had a little speed of sweat. I'm like, what's that doing there? Maybe it'll be explained later. Probably not. I wasn't stressed. No. I was invigorated. Yeah, that's that's when you took out like uh, you put the, the bar knife away and took out the steak knife. Exactly. Like, level up here. Time to time to really see where this goes. The bitter end. Uh yeah. And then just to kind of wrap up here, uh, I like how just how little Mihawk cares about Krieg. Like, Krieg, like, basically tries to kill him again. And that Krieg doesn't learn his lesson. <laughs> and then Mihawk's like, uh, you are indeed a slow learner. And just, like, <laughs> kind of slashes on his way out and just kind of leaves him. Like, he, he's like, all right, just going to go take a nap now. You're not even worth, like, defeating. <laughs> yeah. I can only imagine he is, like, if he had actually fallen asleep, like he's the lightest sleeper in the universe, or he might even sleep sword fight. I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah. Like, 
Yeah, What's I have that? no idea. Oh, I could be creaking to sleep. Oh, no doubt. No doubt in my mind. I bet I know who could beat him, though. Because <laughs> he's so great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, we did have... We did have... Yeah. I was going to bring that up. Yes, yeah. yes, yep. yes. I meant to bring that up, too. Where Odo uh, officially confirms it. And says yeah. that Kuro and he might have a common... Uh, they Kuro sent something similar in him. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. But... Maybe their evil nature. I guess so. Or their <laughs> desire for cushy positions. <laughs> or um, having subordinates that are there to basically serve them and praise them like unconditionally. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I like I like how um, at the end of this chapter here, uh, Luffy kind of trusts his crew to go retrieve Nami. You know, like, yeah, I'll just be able to go later. Him. Yeah, he's like, uh, like he just has like this undying faith in his crew. Even though he hasn't known them for too long, and he just sort of Zoro for like what, like, like a couple, a couple weeks, so like <laughs> most. Like, yeah. yeah, he just saw Zoro get like decimated. He's like, no, Zoro's got this. It's, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> he's all in. I mean, he already considers Sanji a part of the crew, and Sanji has yeah. not even grown up yet. Okay, so let's Already. finish off um, this volume. Uh, first off, with the cover story. Uh, Buggy's crew after the battle, part 13, wanted. The woman tells Buggy she's looking for Luffy, which surprises him. <laughs> hmm, who is I love that? that reaction. Like, he's so surprised his, his body literally pops apart. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a great old detail. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, this woman's looking for Buggy. I'm um, sorry, looking for Luffy for some reason. This lady's looking for Luffy. Oh boy. It's not a wanted poster, it's just a hand-drawn search for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Wonder let's move on to chapter 53, Mackerel Head. With the threat of Mihawk gone, Krieg sets his eyes back on taking the Baratier. He thinks that this will be the perfect disguise as nobody would ever suspect an attack. Another one of his crew members warned that they, if they go back to the Grand Line, they might encounter other strong enemies like Mihawk. Just like before, Krieg shoots his own man. These guys really need to stop trying to convince Krieg not to go to the Grand Line. Krieg calls them all cowards, saying that Mihawk had to have had a Devil Fruit and that the Grand Line is crawling with people with Devil Fruit powers. Krieg again thinks Zeph must have some secrets about the Grand Line in his log, but that will help them deal with Devil Fruit users, along with the location of the One Piece. Wow, he, he seems to think Zeph has all the answers in this logbook from his one year he, on the he Grand really Line. Does. <laughs> Luffy is excited to take on Krieg and make sure Zeph will honor the deal, which would be better in the long run to avoid the additional damage Luffy would cause over a year. Sanji tells the cooks to open the fins of the Baratier so they can fight without damaging the inside of the restaurant. Luffy launches himself over to the Krieg pirates and knocks a bunch of them over. Luffy challenges Krieg, but Krieg points out that Luffy made the fight easier by coming over to where he could fall into the sea. Patty and Carne, uh, Carne mount an attack using the mackerel head one, which is the fish head of the restaurant that detaches to become a ship. They paddle over as they begin shooting at the Krieg pirates. Krieg sees a fence pop up from the Barate and wants it now more than ever. Patty and Carne turn the sights on Don Krieg himself and begin their attack but Krieg manages to stop the ship in its tracks. He tosses the ship right at the Baratier. Fortunately, Sanji is able to jump in the air and kick the ship away from the restaurant. Whoosh. Whoosh. Credit to Krieg, that is a surprising amount of physical strength. <laughs> yeah, yeah. big ship. It's like with one hand, right? Paddleboat, actually. Yeah. Paddleboat. I do love yeah, it's a, it's like a paddle boat. The, the, yeah. the fish detaches. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> The it's restaurant the going into full mode. A macro one. Macro two. Macro three. How many macros are there? Guess. <laughs> Enough to feed everyone. <laughs> yes. It's but the yeah, macro. I mean, macro head won the pride of Baratier. <laughs> <laughs> and it just gets like thrown like a little toy. Such yeah, a great sure. scene, though. That was fun. <laughs> It was fun seeing the restaurant go into full fight mode and just like completely transform. 
yeah, the the fins were a nice touch to kind of put like a stage for them to fight. Yeah, uh, so that they can keep all the damage to the outside instead of going on the inside. And uh, I like how uh, also in this panel we can still see the the hole in the roof. Just for continuity. That's a good point. So uh, yeah, we uh, <laughs> hopefully we don't get any more holes in the roof, but we'll see. I mean, if Luffy can pull off his scheme, then they can avoid that. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> Actually, he's got his team down there. Tucks a garbage bag up there and is like, "Whoops." <laughs> oh well. And I like how uh, Zeph is basically like, "Yeah, this is a good deal. I've seen the destruction you've caused. Like in the two days you've been here, uh, better <laughs> better save the restaurant more trauma by having you like get out of here as soon as possible." Yeah. Exactly. We get to see a real Sanji kick, which and we've seen him kick a few things now, a few faces, a, a boat. Um, <laughs> uh, it definitely seems to be his move, which is interesting because it's also Zeph's like signature move. So I wonder if it's like mm. you know, he probably learned a thing or two from Zeph. Maybe. And I, you do kind of get like a like fatherly figure, Zeph and. Sanji, I feel like he kind of looks up to Zeph, even though they're shit talking each other all the time and calling each other yeah. names. I still feel like there is, <laughs> um, you know, is Zeph kind of pushing him to like move on and do other things and kind of like move out of the. I don't know. It, 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 I get that vibe between them. It feels more it's like fair. like I want you to go out and live your life as opposed to like I want you to get out of here because I hate you. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, it's kind right. of it. They kind of like they have like that kind of strange relationship where yeah. like, yeah. Good Zeph hunting. Every day I look over there and I hope you're not there. <laughs> you know what I'm referencing, Joel? Or no. And the movie Goodwill Hunting, Ben Ben Affleck's character wants oh, oh. Matt Damon's character to leave and move on from South Boston and become something of himself. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I have seen that movie. Yes. Movie too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to see that that side of Sanji. Mm. He's more than just a lecherous not waiter. He's more than just like a womanizing uh, smoker. Oh, well, he is that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we we have seen like the side too. Again, he's shown like a level of care for people yes. by wanting to to feed them. Uh, so he, he does have a passion for cooking. Yep. I think he's overall a pretty likable character, even though he hmm. he can be kind of weird at times. Yep. I agree. Yeah, he has he has positives. He has he has he negatives. Was, he was a, kind of my favorite character when I first read it back in the day when I and during yeah. it, I was like, I just like the very suave style he has. Yeah. That's a good yeah, suave is a good describer for him. Agreed. Yeah, he just kind of has like the, almost kind of like that laid back, nonchalant kind of yeah, like you said, like suave kind of like air about him. But uh, now, now we see him kind of get into action, yeah. So we can kind of get a better idea of like what his his style is like. He's got those kicks with that <laughs> super long leg. It looks like it's three times as long as his body. Yeah, <laughs> we'll just let that go. Yeah, I like that. I like that though. Like. like it, yeah. I think it's a stylistic choice that works for me, especially yeah. because like his jacket and his pants kind of blend in together, so mm -hmm. it kind of adds to to that illusion to make things yeah. look longer. It's one of those things you that see everyone's mouth to grow uh, eight to ten times its normal size in most <laughs> reaction scenes. So I think there's room, there's room for exaggeration. Yeah, or like, even like Usopp's nose bending and stuff like that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Yeah, those are the final details that I feel like because of the style of the series, like he can do those kinds of things and get away with totally. it. And it, it, to me, it comes off more like a strength. It is. I agree, a hundred percent. And it's been like that from the very start. It's yeah. been like a very playful, like emoting kind of animated um, style, which I really love. And then when it's serious, it gets like really badass. Like I, should, I feel like yeah. it has incredibly badass cells, and also like laugh out loud goofy over the top cells exactly so yeah that's one thing i yeah, consistently say about one piece is that it's really good at balancing like very different tones while like still doing like everything like really well 
it's not like mm-hmm. it, it doesn't feel like it stopped her as like like in the humor level or like like the cool like serious moments or like the themes that it touches on yeah. i just feel like it does like a really good job of doing a balancing act and doing everything like really well i totally agree and i, and I feel like at this point as a reader like a, a new reader you've kind of like settled into his writing style and i kind of get like his often sarcastic like sense of humor and so i'm kind of able to just like i think read that more naturally and have like laugh out loud moments where i just like yeah <laughs> and just and, like in it i'm just in it you know yeah I'm really enjoying it and it's it's clicking for me good yeah i'm really glad to hear that you're enjoying it so much um yeah like, like sean i keep teasing yeah it just keeps getting better <laughs> so it really does just keep getting better and i think this this volume was like by far the best fight scene that we've seen so far yeah Hands yeah, down. all the Mihawk stuff is fantastic. So good. The way that all plays out, like iconic stuff. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, definitely, definitely a high point of the series so far. Yep, I, I, uh, Mihawk Krieg. It's just bringing back so much nostalgia more than anything. Like these are these yeah. are the these are like college high school memories for me. It's just, I love it. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other final thoughts before we wrap up for today? We never mentioned the cover. I love this cover too. That is a cool cover. I kind of feel like that cover would have worked well with like the Syrup Village arc with the black cat and stuff. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, I could see that. Maybe that's still the source of uh, inspiration. Yeah, it even has like the black cat like on the the spine, Nami. Oh yeah. Good looks. And there's a literal black cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little Usopp with the dual wielding pistols and the rose in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's also try, interesting. It's <laughs> so good. Yeah, because like Usopp doesn't really use guns, so it's more of like just Yeah. Like just for fun. Yeah. And then Zora only has one sword. Right. And it's then, not like, shooter in the Luffy's, sword. Luffy's wearing clothes. Not. It's like they're all posing to be, you know, the sharpshooter and the swordsman and the captain and the <laughs> yeah. the the kick man. <laughs> all right, so uh, I think we should uh, wrap it up there. Sounds good. good um, stuff. yeah. So, uh, yeah, that that was volume six of One Piece: The Oath. Uh, next time we'll be going into volume seven. Uh, real excited to get more of the Bronte arc. Um, but yeah, I've been Joel. I go by Pirate King Codex on YouTube. I have more One Piece content on there. Uh, still focusing on the One Piece uh, trading card game. Um, so I have more content coming out there. Uh, you can also find uh, this podcast on uh, my YouTube channel. There's also a YouTube channel. Uh, we are reading One Piece. Uh, so you can find the the podcast there as well. It's also going to be available through uh, buzzsprout.com. You can find the podcast as, as an audio version through uh, Amazon Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, most of the places we can find podcasts. So you can find it through there. All right. And uh, we also have had Sean. Sean, still somehow 76 on Twitter <laughs> for the time being. <laughs> and we've had Evan. Yeah, this was Evan. Thanks for watching or listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that will conclude this week's episode of the We Are Reading One Piece podcast. Be sure to bring along all of your hopes and dreams, and we'll see you in the next episode. Remember, swords, scars on the back are a swordsman's shame. <laughs> <laughs>